Hello everyone, let's navigate through ACI 318 building code. Getting used to with this code can be overwhelming if you are using it for the first time. Here I am to give you a quick overview on the flow of the contents in the code. The organization of the code was revamped in ACI 31814 and ACI 31819 code has the same format as that of the 2014 version. So this overview works for both versions. Have your copy of the code ready to flip as you watch this video. If you have a color version of the code, in the table of contents you will see 10 color coded parts. Contents are arranged in an order of design sequence of the structural components. I'll talk in detail about that later and here is a quick view of the table of contents. In ACI 31814, if you see a section number in red, that means the section is updated from the previous version, that is ACI 31811. In ACI 31819 though, you will find a vertical line on the left of the section as an indicator of the update from the previous version that is ACI 31814. The headings are highlighted in gray in ACI 31819 version. The left part of the code are the design provisions which are legally binding. The right part of the code is commentary and is not legally binding. It gives a background and some insight into the corresponding design provisions on the left column. I highly recommend that you develop a habit of reading the commentary sections. Sections in the code may refer to other sections in a loop to cover all the requirements. In part 1, chapter 1 general includes the overall scope of the code. If you need the definition of a variable, then come to chapter 2, notification and terminology. Chapter 3, reference standards, includes reference to course and standards outside of the ACI 318. The real roadmap of the code begins at chapter 4, structural system requirement, which refers to other different sections of the code and covers most of the details. Part 2, loads and analysis, ACI 318 refers to ASC 7 for the minimum design loads in chapter 5. All of the analysis related provisions are in chapter 6, structural analysis, including simplified, first order, second order, linear, non-linear analysis, slenderness of columns, material and section properties. Part 3, members, designers probably spend most of the time in part 3 of the code. The chapters are arranged in a general order of design sequence, for example, if there are no other constraints involved and just following the load path, I will start designing a slab and then go to the beam, columns, walls, diaphragms as lateral load resisting system, and the foundation. Each chapter in part 3 is also arranged in the order of design. Starting with the scope and general, a designer would like to know the design limits to design a member. Required strength is determined by the load and then ensure the member has adequate design strength to meet the demand. After that, check for minimum and maximum reinforcement limits. And finally, detail the design. Other extra provisions are added to the end. Part 4 includes chapter 15 to 17, beam column and slab column joints, connections between members, and anchors to concrete. Part 5 includes chapter 18 and is devoted for seismic design provisions. All the requirements for concrete and steel materials and their durability are included in chapter 19 and 20 of part 6. Start and time models and serviceability requirements are included in part 7. Part 8, 9 and 10 have one chapter each and cover reinforcement detailing, construction documents and inspection, and strength evaluation of existing structures. I hope this overview will help you navigate through ACI 318 building code.